the SOAS Food Studies Center uh, is a center, interdisciplinary center located here at SOAS. It has members from most of the academic departments here at SOAS who share an interest in food. There are over 40 members of staff uh, who are members of the center. We also are involved, we're, we're involved in a number of things. We're involved in uh, uh, research projects that relate to food and food ways in the various places that, that SOAS is interested in. Uh, we also uh, have various uh, forms of teaching that are related to food from, for example, a master's degree course in the anthropology of food here at SOAS. We have a number of alumni of, of our program and current students about um, who are taking that program. Uh, but we also have a number of PhD students here at SOAS in the various disciplinary departments who do work in, in food-related areas as well. In addition to that, we run a, a weekly seminar series uh, that uh, focuses on food issues called the SOAS Food Forum. And then we have a number of extra events throughout the year. And every year we choose one special event that uh, has us interacting with uh, the broader public or with a particular community in the broader public. And so this year, we're very happy to uh, be participating in this project organized by the London Aromian Association. This is a key skill for anybody doing an oral history project. It's not just um, creating a space for people to talk, but it's actually having the ears, having the ability to listen, to really listen to what people are trying to communicate. And that's been something that's been very much part of the training and the expertise of the, the people who've been collecting these memories and stories within this project. Thank you very much um, to be invited to speak tonight. Um, it's a great honor. Um, well, I just have a few comments on the film. Um, first of all, I thought that the strength of the film is that it showed the Iranian food and restaurants, how they've become part of London's fabric. And I think that is something that uh, we've seen over the, the you know, like I said, from the 1950s. Um, when I first came to London, it was over see, 20 years ago now, and I lived in Kensington. And I um, became friends with many Iranians um, who took me to Abadana, um, but they also took me to, uh, I remember going on, it was actually a date with the, a guy who took me to a place called Alunak. And at that time, it was a little tiny uh, caravan in Olympia in an undeveloped area. Uh, I don't think anyone's been there, but that little, it was a little caravan, and it was in a, it's all developed there now, but it had just a, uh, a car wash and some old broken down cars, and it was just a little tiny caravan. And um, the food was fantastic. And it started to get more and more popular for people living in, in Kensington. And it was then featured in Vogue magazine. And then it became really popular. Yes, watching the film brought many uh, memories and associations of uh, uh, my uh, long uh, love affair with. Uh, Iranian food. Um, I've always had uh, Iranian friends and Iranian students, and uh, many of our social life revolved around food. And uh, we had dinner parties, and I've done uh, quite a lot of research and writing on specifically on food in comparatively, particularly in the Middle East. And uh, I've looked at kind of variations on a theme that you get in different <coughs> Middle Eastern regions. Um, and I say regions rather than countries, because uh, so much of the food cultures is to do with geography rather than ethnicity. So, you know, when the man in the film says, uh, well, Dolma is really Armenian and not Turkish. Well, it is Armenian and Turkish and Kurdish. And you know, it's the, that the people who lived in that part of Anatolia who shared uh, a food culture. And of course, with the development of nationalism, the Kurds say no, it's Kurdish, and the Arabs say no, it's Arab, and, and so on. Um, it's been a pleasure to be involved with the uh, project. I've somewhat enjoyed it, and I hope I've been uh, able to contribute in a meaningful way to something that's quite um, extensive. In um, the history of Persian food is amazing. Um, I've been working on it for the past four or five years, uh, trying to find sources. Um, and it's very difficult. 
but uh, what I will try to do tonight is to give you a, a, a telescopic version and um, a look through the centuries to see why it has been, it has developed the way it has and how far its influence has spread. Um, a lucky coincidence brought um, a culture and geography together. The people who lived in the on the Iranian plateau, happened to have a very rich and um, ritualistic food culture, the Persians. Uh, the area itself happened to be a part of the Fertile Crescent, which is believed to be where culture, agriculture and farming started in the world. So you have people interested in food on the one hand, and the ingredients rich and diverse on the other. And you have uh, the formula for a fantastic cuisine to develop. Uh, 